I actually probably should have used more pedals, but this is fine for now. Now, place the jar in a warm place, out of the sun, for two to five days, and until the oil has absorbed all the herbs essential oil. Like that. After three to five days, carefully remove the cheesecloth from the jar and squeeze it to remove most of the oil that is soaked into the plant material. Then smell it. It should have picked up a light scent. Remove the flowers from the cloth, refill with the same quantity of fresh material, and put it back into the jar. Tap and let sit for three to five days. If this is repeated several times, the number varies with just different herbs, the oil should become heavily saturated with the plant's scent. After the final straining, bottle and label the oil. It is now ready for use in magic. If you don't want to start making your own scented oil, simply buy them and use them in magic. Oils intended for aromatherapy are usually legitimate plant oils. A number of lines of oils are available at stores or by mail. Making magical oils is as easy as making powdered incense. Building up a good stock of oils is perhaps the hardest part, whether you make them yourself or purchase them. Once you have a good selection of 10 to 20 oils, you can start mixing up magical blends. You can, of course, buy magical blends in stores, and the products are of varying quality, from very good to poor. These can be used in magic, of course, but enchant them prior to using. Use your intuition when selecting oils in shops. The same is true with incense and all magical herb products. Although I enjoy making my own, I still do buy them, too. A good selection of oils to start out with includes carnation, rosemary, lavender, lemon, rose geranium, myrrh, cinnamon, sandalwood, jasmine, gardenia, clove, rose, and tuberose. You'll buy more as you need them for various recipes. For oil, oil blending, you'll also need four or five eyedroppers, several small glass bottles with tight-fitting lids, and a mixing bottle or two. If you use bottles that have eyedroppers attached, available from medical supply stores, you can save having to buy separate eyedroppers. But what about enchanting oil? Well, unlike incense, these oils are enchanted after they are blended. We'll make up a healing type of oil. Of course, no magic oil or spell is a replacement for conventional medical treatment. Healing magic works in conjunction with orthodox medicine. A physical problem is usually a symptom of a spiritual problem, and healing magic works to solve the physical and the spiritual problems, thereby speeding the healing process. To use a simplified example, cleaning and dressing a wound with a plantain leaf or a Gosling commercial antibacterial cream is preferred to chanting spells. Perform the necessary first aid or get medical help, and then use magic to restore, restore the body to normal. Okay, back to the oil. The Steel Now oil requires three ingredients, rose, carnation, and rosemary oil. You'll notice I rarely give amounts of ingredients in my recipe. Part of this is tradition. Many were passed in this way. Also, there's room for personal experimentation and taste in oil and incense composition. If a recipe said to add one part of the first ingredient and you thought that was too much, you'd probably change it. Because of this tendency, I usually don't include amounts in my recipe. Feel free to mix until your intuition tells you the scent is right. As you mix, note the amount and the proportions of the oil on a note card or in your herbal notebook. If you do create a wonderful variation on a recipe, you'll be able to make up another batch using the same formula. If not, you'll be able to modify it further according to your notes. Okay, take your mixing bottle and place it before you. With an eyedropper, add 10 to 20 drops of rosemary oil. This one's good enough. This should be the dominant scent. Why? Well, because rosemary is a strong herb. Looking at the recipes, you'll eventually know intuitively which should be the dominant scent. Now, add 6 to 12 drops of carnation oil. If you're using separate eyedroppers, do use a, a new eyedropper for each oil, because otherwise all the eyedroppers will get mixed up with the oils from the various uses. Something like that. I don't know. Swirl the bottle gently clockwise, strong enough to mix the oils, but not strong enough to cause bubbles and foam in the bottle. Now smell it. If it seems right, fine. If not, add more carnation until the amount is right. Remember to record each ingredient's amount on a card or in your herbal notebook. Mix it if you've added more and then sniff again. Do you feel something? Perhaps an energy or a rush of power to your head? Good. That's the power of the herbs and oils coming at you. It's still raw and unrefined, but with time it will mellow and grow in power. Seems pretty good. Now we'll add some rose oil. Say half as much as the carnation. Close enough. Whirl it again, 
and then smell it. Not bad. It smells resinous, spicy, and sweetly floral. If the scent seems right to you and the vibrations of the oil is strong, you finish your first magical oil. Use the same proportions to make up a larger batch, say one half cup or so. Now enchant it, holding it in your hands and strongly visualizing the oil filled with healing vibrations. Once it's pulsing with power, bottle and label it. It is ready for use in magic, but for best results, let it sit for two weeks for the oil's energies to blend. Using this technique to blend all your magical oils, you can build up quite a big stock. Use recipes I give you here are ones you find yourself or create. Store your oils in jars with tight-fitting lids, out of sunshine, in a cool place. There are virtually endless ways of using oils and magic. They can be rubbed on the body to bring new insolations inside us, added to bath salt, combined with dry ingredients to make incense, dropped on the magical sachets to intensify the powers, used to mark out magical runes or symbols, applied to candles which are then burnt, releasing the oils and energies, and so on. Some magicians have a stock of 100 herbs and flower oils with 10 to 20 magical blends. While this is fine for a start, 10 or 12 oils are a good number to start experimenting with. Here are four more recipes you might enjoy. They, like all the recipes in this video, have never before been made public. To foretell future trends, to enhance your natural psychic talents, wear crystal vision oil. For protection from ills and banes of everyday life, wear this oil. Wear Hawaiian love oil when you're seeking a mate. To attune your consciousness to higher planes of awareness, wear spirituality oil. Magical oils don't end there. Several things are sometimes added to oils to boost their power. Enchanted roots, herbs, or flowers are often added to oil. Orris root and love type oils, cloves and money recipes, frankincense and protective exorcistic and purificatory oils, and so on. Semi-precious stones are also often added. Small pieces of turquoise can be added to protective formulae, jade to healing, honey quartz crystals to power formulas, Lapis lazuli and happiness oils, moonstone and pink tourmaline for love oils, and so on. Get a good gu basic guidebook on stone magic and go from there. Now these are the first steps in blending and using magical oils. Keep mixing and smelling, and you'll soon find oil magic becoming a part of your everyday life, where it's the easiest form of herb magic. As I mentioned earlier, one of the ways magical oils are used is in creating bath salts. These are simple to make, magically powerful, and transform each bath into a rite of magic. In a sense, bathing in a tub full of water strewn with magical bath salts is similar to anointing with an oil. As usual, when bath salts are made and used, your mind should be filled, not consumed, with the salt's magical purpose. The basic ingredients are oils and salt. You can use different types of salt. Here I've got baking soda, table salt, and Epsom salt. You can use any combination of these, but I usually keep baking soda as the main ingredient because it leaves the skin feeling soft. In a non-metallic mixing bowl, combine the three salts. I usually make up two to three cups or so, but you can make any amount that you wish. Since there is magic in color, even in food colorings, you might want to consider coloring your bath salts. Tinting your bath salts does increase the magical effectiveness through their power to color. Of course, the color must be in harmony with the magical product. Here's a quick look. Mixing up these colors is easy by following the directions on the back of the food coloring box. I know this isn't ancient magic, but it works. Okay, if you want to color your bath salt, mix the coloring with two or more necessary to create your color in a teaspoon. First, and then blend it to the mixed salt. As a demonstration, we're going to make a money bath. Since green is the color I associate with money, we'll color it green. Simply drop five to ten or more drops of coloring onto the salt. The amount varies and depends on the amount of salt you're mixing and the intensity of the color you desire. Again, it doesn't really matter as long as you're satisfied with the final product. Now start mixing using a spoon. Blend the color into the salt with a firm hand, and it isn't easy, believe me. It will take you a few minutes to do this, but eventually the salt will take the color evenly. If it seems a little too light, add more salt. Well, add more oil to the salt. <laughs> when you're finished, it will look something like this. Now we're ready to add the oil. For this money bath salt, we'll need tonka, cedar, clove, and patchouli oil. Using eyedroppers, one for each oil, add from three to six drops of each to the salt. 